So we could still say A is like one and two maybe, and then B. If the hairs on the back of your neck are standing up and you're feeling a sense of dread. Okay, so again, what we'll do is let's draw Venn diagrams. Of That's because this is a math class, not just any math, sophisticated graduate level stuff. A union B complement. All of it makes up the bedrock of artificial intelligence or AI and understanding it and is homework where we start for Congressman for. Don Beyer. Come on this way, you brought your books. Absolutely. Yeah, I thought you might be interested. <laughs> At 72 years old, when he's not doing his day job, the Virginia congressman is going back to school at George Mason University to study AI, learning how it works. I did get 100 on the last desk. And how best to regulate it. Now, I'm never gonna be a scientist, but um, I'm help, helping make policy on some really important things. Do you feel that before this experience, you knew enough about the science behind the stuff that you were tasked with regulating and making laws about? Probably enough to, to do it okay, but no, I didn't know nearly enough. What's been called the AI revolution is almost certain to change the way we live and work. Basically, artificial intelligence is a computer's ability to do what a human does, see things, make decisions, speak, move. And most importantly, something powered by AI has the capacity to learn and improve. Like this robot dog at George Mason figuring out how to get around crowds. You see that dragon? Or the augmented reality yeah. dragon Looks students like made yes. fly before our very eyes, navigating real world yeah. obstacles. Oh my gosh. So it's learning where the buildings are and where the trees are. But AI is almost entirely unregulated with not a single U.S. law focused on artificial intelligence. So are we too late to regulate? No, no. In fact, if we tried to regulate it early, we would have no idea what we were regulating. Even now, it's really hard to say, hey, here's what I think we should do. Um, because it's so new, we don't know the upsides or the downsides. I pointed the algorithm towards the voice I want. But the time to act is now, argues Rep. Jake Auchincloss. The MIT graduate showed us how he tried to force his colleagues to start paying attention to AI. I wrote a prompt that I then input into this app on my phone. Turning to his phone and asking ChatGPT to write this speech. This is a critical step forward in an era where AI and its implications are the taking center stage. The first AI-generated speech delivered on the floor of the House of Representatives. This can't be social media 2.0, where policymakers for 15 years allowed companies to get big, to get rich, and to not sufficiently interrogate the effects on society, on politics, on the media that their technology was having. We have got to be ahead of this wave of innovation, not behind. Auchincloss wants to democratize AI, make it accessible to everyone, not just Silicon Valley behemoths already investing tens of billions. Big tech is not going to write the policy on AI. The American people need to be writing the policy on AI. Is that a fight you can win? Yes. It's a fight that we have to win. But can Congress really regulate something we found many members admit neither they nor their colleagues fully understand? The short answer is no. The long answer is hell no. You don't think your colleagues know enough? No, of course not. Some colleagues know more than others, mm -hmm. but I think everybody has to be aware of what's happening. So we have some colleagues up here that don't know how to log into Facebook so or Zoom. Do we have the knowledge set here to do it? No. Video game designer turned representative Jay Oberdolte is the only member of Congress you could double the firepower. with a master's degree in AI. Now the California congressman finds himself explaining what AI is to his fellow lawmakers. When we talk about the dangers of AI, what most people know about it comes from movies and they think a dangerous AI is something out of the Terminator, evil army of robots with red laser eyes taking over the world. Have you ever had a constituent come up to you and say, Congressman, I'm worried about losing my job to AI. Have you had that happen to you yet? Yes. And what do you say to them? I say, uh, yes, I'm worried about that too. 
But AI, he says, has significant life-changing benefits too, like streamlining a patient's diagnosis in medicine. And Obernolte warns not enough is known yet about how exactly AI will change our lives. What we can't do is throw the baby out with the bathwater and regulate without understanding what we're doing. We need to, without understanding the problems that we're trying to solve. Because if we do that, we're going to stifle the development of something that could be incredibly beneficial. But every day, millions of Americans are already interacting with powerful AI in the palms of our hands, posing a stream of endless questions to chatbots like ChatGPT and Bing. The problem, oftentimes their answers are wrong. OpenAI, which developed ChatGPT and whose technology powers Bing's chatbot, told us in a statement, their AI sometimes writes plausible sounding but incorrect or nonsensical answers. And fixing this issue is challenging, but they are constantly incorporating feedback. We have an election coming up. People are using this stuff right now. Does Congress have a duty to act now? If we knew what to do, I would say yes, but I don't think we know what to do. My wife went into Bing last week, I think, to said, who is Don Beyer, and got all kinds of fake stuff. <laughs> made know, stuff up. Made, about made it. stuff up, yeah. It's doing that about a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. So um, how, do we, how do we regulate that? And especially because we, more than any other country in the world, have this deep, deep-seated commitment to free speech. The hard part here is just figuring the proof steps. Congressman by day, now student by night, Bayer is committed to try to answer these questions eventually, but admits that will take time. So the exact same as the first day. And if ChatGPT has taught us anything, it's as Congress debates and waits, the machines will only keep learning new tricks. It's the poetry it's writing, the scripts it's writing, the, the computer programming is astonishing. So yeah, there is a, a meaningful thing there. I have real trouble imagining what legislation would protect us from that creative destruction. It's like, almost go back to the atomic bomb. You can't uninvent it.